Well, hello there. Brent here the Bring Your Own Tools on today's episode. If you wanna learn how we install this beautiful concrete overlay, keep on watching. Let's start. So, it all starts somewhere, and this is where BYOT started. BYOT number one, how to paint a tiled surface. Yep, it's been through the ringer over the last few years, and I knew I was gonna remove this at a certain point, just didn't know when. Guess what? Today is the day. Let's get it demoed. Because this project entails making a mess indoors, I highly suggest taping off the surrounding areas as well as applying a bit of protection on the floors as well as blocking off any surrounding railings if you have that because we don't want a piece of tile to fly off and hit someone in the head as they're coming up the stairs. That's just something you don't want to worry about. Now as for removing this tile, this tile is from the 1950s and it is on there quite well. They did an amazing job at adhering this tile. Which is why I'm taking a very large sledgehammer, a few hammers, and chiseling away the slate tile that's actually placed in a very thick mortar bed. Now a very thick mortar bed like this is a bit hard to deal with because you don't really want to rip it out. The mortar bed itself is approximately 2 inches thick and I don't want to completely remove that because that's just a lot of wasted material. Which is why I'm trying to salvage as much of that bed as possible and we'll just level it out afterwards. The crazy thing with this install is that the grout itself is actually even tougher to remove than the tile. It's on there like concrete on concrete and guess what? I am definitely getting tired of removing this by hand, which is why I picked up one of these. So, sometimes it's just better to have the proper tool to do something. This floor, yeah, I could have done the entire thing with a couple hammers and a sledgehammer, but after trying to deal with it for a while, especially the grout lines, you want the proper tool. And this is the proper tool, demolition hammer. Makes life a lot easier. You can rent them for under 100 bucks for a day, but inevitably I use them quite often, so why not buy one? This tool is not a cheap tool, but it's worth its weight in gold if you ever find yourself doing a lot of demolition, which I have in my life. So I felt like it was about time to actually purchase one. It's four to 500 bucks online, and I'll leave a link in the description box below if you are in the market for purchasing one of these bad boys. Now the amazing thing about this is that it can pulsate extremely fast and there is a lot of weight behind it and therefore removing tile like this and those grout lines are extremely easy with a demolition hammer like this. Plus it's just fun to work with a tool that just makes the job a lot easier and a lot more satisfying in the long run. Oh and I've probably mentioned this before but isn't slow motion just satisfying? Yeah, something about it. Makes everything better. At this point in time, I remove all the remaining tile and grout lines and then proceed to cleaning up this entire space. Easy enough, especially since it's a small space and all I had to do is take a broom to get up all the large pieces and then just make sure you vacuum up the entire space in order to get all those small particles that have been left behind thus far. Now obviously, as you can see, this is a very uneven surface, and the easiest way to go about getting a perfectly smooth surface is to apply a concrete leveler. But first, we want to prime this entire surface first in order to have proper adhesion between the mortar bed and the concrete leveler. Very easy to apply this leveler to this entire space, and after we have that taken care of, we can proceed to mixing up our leveler. Whenever you're mixing up any of your concrete or mortar mixtures, I always highly suggest adding your water first and then your mixture. It makes it a lot easier on your drill as well as yourself, and I find it's a lot easier to have a consistent mixture all the way through without having any small random dry spots at the bottom because you added the material first and the water just couldn't get to the very corners of the bucket. I think that's probably happened to a lot of us, right? Let me know if dry corners ever happened to you. I proceed to pouring my concrete leveler in the very center of this entire space and obviously it's the deepest pour because I was just a little overly aggressive with the sledgehammer at first. After I pour my bucket I grab my squeegee and just try and coerce this material into all of those small crevices as evenly as possible. This space is approximately 7 feet by 6 feet and I used about a bag and a half to cover this entire area. 
Oh, and if you're wondering how I prevented the solution to get into that vent, I actually just took a bit of silicone, applied that to the inside, and then applied some foil tape, which is extremely sticky, and just propped it up a slight hair higher than it needed to be. Easy solution, and it completely stopped any of this material from getting inside the vent. Now that our self leveler is dry, it's now time for our top coat. And for this project, we are going to be using our feather finish by Artix, which we have used in a number of different projects. This one is going to be no different. We're going to mix it up. We're going to spread it evenly. We're going to smooth it out as much as possible to have a really nice rustic concrete look. I think it's going to all turn out. Don't know because I've never done it before, but got to try it sometime. Let's do it. We mix this up to a nice smooth consistency and if I had to relate it to something it would be more like a creamy thick peanut butter. I apply a couple nice dollops to the concrete leveler and then spread it out evenly with my finishing trowel. Now it's a bit hard to tell at this angle but the leveler is slightly lower than the existing finished wood flooring. That's because I anticipated this and I wanted to ensure that the feather finish was the exact same height as the wood flooring. As I apply this material to the substrate it's extremely easy and super smooth to apply. Very nice, very satisfying and with this technique I'm going over the entire space as smoothly as possible with reducing all those small bubbles if there are any. Now in all honesty I've never done this technique before but we were going for a more modern rustic look and I personally thought that this product was going to be perfect for that type of application because I had used it in the past. Is modern rustic a thing? I, I don't know, is it? Let me know if you've ever heard of it before. This feather finish does dry extremely quickly but I did let it dry for 24 hours just in case. I start removing my painter's tape and as you can see it leaves extremely crisp lines because the edge break between the feather finish and the wood flooring was the exact same height. After I remove all of the tape I then grab a sanding block with 320 grit sandpaper and start abrading the surface, especially that edge because I want a perfect transitional period between the feather finish and the wood flooring. I go over the entire surface with a circular motion to ensure that I have a very smooth finish, but the circular motion also helps prevent any odd streaks that would occur if I was just doing a back and forth motion. This is a quick and easy process, just make sure that after you're done sanding, you go over this entire space with a vacuum just to clean up all of those small particles. As for our seal coat, we are using Bare Low Luster Sealer. Now this gives us a very nice, more semi-gloss look, and it's used for interior and exterior purposes. I apply our finish with a chip brush, which evenly distributes the solution evenly and consistently all the way across the floor. This brush also makes it very easy to get into those tight-knit corners that you see there, as well as apply it to the general area adjacent to it. However, after I apply the solution all the way across one section, I did take a foam roller and just roll out that specific area all the way across. That will ensure that I have even coverage and a smooth transition between the two sections that I did at two separate times, just in case. Because this is an interior application, I'm just applying one thick coat. If it was an exterior, I'd probably apply more than one coat, but I feel this is plenty for this project. And in the end, after you let it dry, go ahead and install your vent, and guess what? We are done! I always love trying new things, especially when they work out, and in my personal opinion, this one definitely worked out. Between the before and the after is an extremely beautiful transformation, and one that makes me especially proud because it shows how far this channel has come between BYOT number one to BYOT 111. Oh, and did I mention this floor is now waterproof? Now that is one beautiful, sexy beast. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs>